Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Right now I'm standing on my combine platform and we're just blowing off the combines and getting them filled up for the day. So this is what happens in the morning during harvest and we're going to finish this 160 acre field. Make sure to subscribe and like this video to see more awesome videos to learn how your food gets to your table. gave me the evening off last night so they must have finished that 160 acre piece which is why we're on the next one now we're going to open up a few passes so that the grain cart and trucks can get in see the second slot starts over here kate just follow me around a, a little bit and it starts running over by this little shack here oh okay i see it Thank you. We're starting the first row of the field right now. First pass of the new field, I just set my header down. Oh, I didn't know you were out there. So, I, I, yeah, I think about 20, put 20 in them. There's a fuel pickup right there. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're just gonna let them dump so we can get away from that truck. You know what I mean? I'm going 2.6 miles an hour and I'm two bars under being maxed out, so I could probably push it a little harder. My Uncle Chris just said on the radio, he doesn't know how these huge swaths, because they really are huge, can have such little wheat in them. Uncle Chris was saying yesterday at lunch that they have half the amount of wheat they should, which is really bad. Big Mormon crickets every once in a while, Pete? Yes, I do. There's tons of grasshoppers. How about those big fat Mormon crickets? They're gigantic. There's some huge crickets in these wheat swaths, but there's also some normal sized grasshoppers. And my uncle Chris and I were just talking about how there is so many grasshoppers this year, a lot more compared to last year. Right now the combine grain tanks are getting full and our grain cart is getting some pressure added to its tires. So it's not following us around and we'll probably make it to the end of this row, but we'll need to dump in a semi truck and it looks like Darcy's not in the cab. My uncle just radioed for him. He's probably helping fill up the tires. So it'll be interesting to see what we end up doing up here. is full but the grain tank buzzer hasn't gone off. I can definitely see the wheat piling up at the top of your combine. Oh well, my buzzer went off. I'm gonna run it for a little bit longer. So Uncle Chris's buzzer is gone off but mine hasn't yet. Anyone listen to the radios over there? It looks like they're all out helping the grain cart and not anyone in the radios. We have to get well, you can both truck over or we can go dump in it. That sounds good. My grain tank buzzer just went off. No one's listening to the radios over there, so we don't have anyone to drive the truck over. So. We'll drive up there so they don't have to chase us. Sounds good, thank you. My grain tank full buzzer just came on, and it says on a signal down here. Let's pull the truck over here. So I'm going to stop my combine right here, a good distance behind Uncle Chris's. Back up. It looks like we're stopping here and putting our augers out, maybe. Uncle Chris thinks that'll signify to the truck people that we need to dump. I'm going to go and hook that red tractor and run it to town. That guy's going to be in tonight, maybe, or early tomorrow. The Case IH red tractor that I had in one of There's my videos. There's a block over there to put that thing on. That's what okay, my dad's talking about. Wag, wagon jack. I'll pick up that other tire, too, when we go in. He sold the tractor. A block to put it under the jack, so when you unhook it. Yeah, OK. That tire thing you guys said was kind of broken off. I pushed on a little bit and it broke right off and dumped all the air out of it. So. Do you want me to wait for you to finish unload or do you want me to head back to the field? Go ahead, head back. I'll be there in just a second. You're farther, a little bit farther back anyway. Sounds good. I'm unloading right now and then my Uncle Chris will unload and we'll go back to the field. It looks like the grain cart's ready to go for the day, so that's really good. And I also get a notification that says my unloading auger's on. That little building falling down right there is an old granary, so that used to be grain storage for farmers in the olden days. It was a little wood building and they were a lot smaller than they are today. Jim just radioed and said the truck is stuck in the road. Not to put, you use that when you're uh, engaged or in spin. That's right. You put it in part and then you engage it. You don't switch it when you're when it's spinning is what it means. Okay, I'll try that then. Okay. Handle of that shifter paddle. There's a manual switch. 
switch on it, you know. You might want to switch it in and out of auto. And it could have got bumped over at manual. Jim, uh, drive over and get Dean out of his truck. And if that worst goes to worst, there's a, uh, there's a tow rope in the back of my pickup. It just needs a little tug. Why, it, it, it won't start, Jim? No, it'll start. It's just stuck in the middle of the road. The do the each one of the duels went in the rut, and it's just spinning. Oh, oh yeah, I know what you mean. It's going, it goes good. My dad just said the red tractor bombs down the highway. How many gears does this have? I mean, twenty. God, I don't remember. I think that might be about max. I'm not sure. I usually just keep bumping it up until it don't bump anymore. Nope, we got 21. I think this is the fastest tractor on the farm. By far. My dad just said the red tractor he just sold is the fastest tractor on the farm by far. Oh my gosh, that's funny. It's been a pretty good day of harvest so far. There's been no breakdowns, which is really awesome. I'm going to put my auger out right now because the grain cart should be coming to dump soon. I'm going three miles an hour and I don't even have my gauges maxed out, but I want to make sure I don't pass Uncle Chris or get too close to his combine. I just got a notification that said my unloading auger is out. It looks like the grain cart's lining up right now. He's been driving a little bit too fast for the combines today. It's okay if you drive too slow as a grain cart because the combines can always slow down. But if you drive too fast, the combines will plug up if they go fast. He lined up pretty well this time. You should be able to see the grain in my grain tank getting lower. I just shut the grain off and I'm going to swing my auger back. That was my dump on the go for today. I think it was the second, third, maybe fourth. I can't even remember anymore. My dad just pulled out of the field because I think he thought he saw something smoking, which is really bad. I can't remember what he said the problem was, but it happened last year. So he pulled it out of the field. I think they might have to take it back to the shop. Uncle Chris came over, the water truck was brought over. A fire is the last thing we need in a field. So hopefully everything works out. I'm yet again the only combine running. Looks like the combine has left the field. I think something has to be adjusted in it. I hope it's okay. Feels really slow to be the only combine in the field today. I'm running pretty much at capacity, which is around three miles an hour. Actually, let's dump headed west. Just because the end of my row is coming up, my grain tank buzzer hasn't gone off, it'd be a little bit easier for me. I wouldn't have to stop the combine. That'd be a big loss of efficiency because we already have one combine down. That means this running at its max capacity is extremely important. The amount of sawflies on my window is incredible. I'm gonna wipe them off again. Grain's coming out of the window. I'll probably finish dumping before the end here. Now I'm picking my header up, making my turn, and slowly Brad, straightening out. Slowing down and headed into the wheat swap. So I'm starting my pass headed north now. I guess the grain cart just followed me all around because I thought I'd have to dump on this pass and then I didn't, and then I thought I'd have to dump headed this way and I didn't, but now I have to dump headed this way. I have three semi-trucks, one tandem, and a grain cart all to myself. And my dad just said, I'll take over your job, means how I don't have one anymore. And my Uncle Chris said, yeah, why don't we just break down your combine too? It was absolutely hilarious. I finished this half of the field, so I'm moving on to the other half. I don't even know if it's a quarter of the field I finished or a half, I can't tell. So I'm getting ready to dump in the grain cart right now, and then he'll take this load back to the semi-truck. Three semi-trucks, one combine. So my dad may or may not be coming to run combine and giving me a little bit of a combine break, which is well needed during harvest. 
I'm finishing the last part of this field, which we started first thing this morning. I will definitely not get anywhere close to being done with the other half this evening because there's only one combine. Although I am pushing max capacity, I'm being as efficient as possible without pushing it so far over the limit that I'm risking plugging the machine up and having to use our employees and me to help dig it out because these things are hard to dig out. Then there's no combines going in the field, so it's really important I keep this one running. I'm almost at the end of this pass headed north and there isn't one headed back up south unless I move to that other part of the field. What would you like me to do? Doesn't look like my dad or Uncle Chris has a coffee because that's who I was speaking to. I'm just dumping the last bit of weed I have left so our cart driver can send Steve Wall down the road with a full truck of grain. And then my dad's giving me the afternoon off because he doesn't have a job anymore because his combines broke down. I just got out of the combine because my dad offered to run it for the afternoon. Thank you, dad. The other combine is broke down. Right, and I need a job and Kate needs time to edit. So. Yes. So I'm going to go run the combine. Hopefully I'll run it as good as Kate. Hers is the only one that ain't broke down. What happened to the other one? Something to do with the variable speed uh, drive for the header or something. I don't even know. Well, You'll get I, it started again? Well, I got the John Deere guy on it, Kate, so he's going to send somebody out tomorrow if he can. They think they might have one, so maybe we'll get it fixed. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Dad. Okay. See you, Kate. Bye. Grandpa's taking me home now from the combine. Thank you, Grandpa. I'm here with Jed from Frontline Egg Solutions, the best John Deere mechanic ever, and we always love having him come out because he gets the problem solved. So what happened to our combine? Um, basically a failure of the uh, feeder house drive. It's a variable speed uh, high torque drive. And um, is what happened here is uh, the, the hub broke out of the, the shiv, and so we're gonna install a new hub, and we're installing um, new seals and everything, grease seals. And, oh, that's um, great put it back together, adjust the belt, and uh, we should be going again. That's wonderful, thank oh, you so, so much. So over here is where the failure happened. And so basically we just had to pull it down and, and um, drain oil. Um, luckily uh, the customer caught it before uh, all the oil drained out because it did take the seal out from the heat. Due to a good operator, we have a lot less to, to fix this time. Yes, and that's when my dad said, wow, it really smells like it's burning oil. Yeah. And it was. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome, anytime. I'd like to give you a tote bag, Darcy. Okay. Here. Do you want to try it on? It'll look fabulous. It's great for carrying snacks. Yeah. How do you like it? Well, I will try to try it out and see how it's like. Well, thank you. I think you look great in it. Yeah. Just fabulous. Yeah. And it's wonderful for carrying snacks. You could probably put my uh, tablet in there. Oh, that would be awesome. That's a super good idea. I take that, take that with me when I go somewhere, and then, like, if nothing to do, I'll just turn on uh, Amazon Prime and watch movies. Oh, that's awesome. I think you should get a designer dog and carry around in oh, like I a little could do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, put it right inside. <laughs> That'd look good. That'd take it Maybe my cat would write it. <laughs> oh, that would there be so go. cute, Darcy. Yeah. We have to see a picture of that. That would be adorable. Yeah, I don't think cute. I can coax you to do it. <laughs> Well, thank you for being so yeah. amazing in the videos. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more videos to learn about how your food gets to your table. Also follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, everywhere else. And you can visit the Kate's Egg website, K-A-T-E-S-A-G dot com to learn a little more about my story and purchase a Kate's Egg tote bag. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!